Hi and welcome to this video on triangles, maths made easy. Now a triangle is a plane figure and it's a polygon and it's bounded by three lines And also a triangle has three sides, so bounded by three lines means it has three sides and three vertices. Also the angles the three vertices, the angles add to 180 degrees. Let's have a quick discussion about angles. So in a straight line the angle is drawn like a semicircle and it's a hundred and 80 degrees. If we have a right angle we draw this like so. So this is 90 degrees. And this is a right angle. If we have an angle which is less than 90 degrees, so this is less than 90 degrees, then this is called an acute angle. If we have an angle which is greater than 90 degrees, then this is called an obtuse angle. So here we have an angle which is greater than 90 degrees. In the previous case we had an angle which was less than 90 degrees. Acute, obtuse, right angle. When we're talking about triangles there are some names used for specific triangles. So a scalene triangle has no equal sides, that means in length, so whenever we signify the length of a triangle we use hatch marks or tick marks so if we use one tick mark here that signifies that length if there is another side which is the same length then we use one tick mark so in a scalene there is no other side of the same length so we use two tick marks is there another one of the same length? no, so we use three tick marks so these tick marks signify that the three sides are all different lengths. Here we have an isosceles triangle and with an isosceles triangle we have two sides 
equal in length. So we can mark that, we tick mark that one and that one. They're equal in length. And also using semicircles to mark the angles, we have two angles which are also equal. So this angle and this angle will also be equal. So that's an isosceles triangle. An equilateral triangle has three sides. equal in length so this side, this side and this side will be equal in length and also the three angles will be equal so we can signify that by using arcs that one, that one and that one when we're talking about non-right angle triangles, these are called oblique triangles and they don't have a right angle. Also, we can have acute oblique, so that angle is acute, it's less than 90 degrees. also have obtuse so this one is greater than 90 degrees so this is oblique obtuse triangle now when we're talking about the angles and labeling of a triangle we usually label the vertex A and then the a vertex B and then a vertex C. Then the side opposite that vertex would be A. So the side opposite C would be little c. And then the side opposite B would be little b. Also, this angle here is referred to as angle A, this would be referred to as angle B, and this would be referred to as angle C. Now, the sum of the interior angles, so angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. So the sum of the angles 180 degrees. Now if we have an interior angle here of B degrees, the exterior angle would be here and this we can call D. The exterior angle is supplementary. do we mean by that? So the exterior angle is supplementary to the interior angle. So we mean that D is 180 degrees minus B degrees. Also remember that three given angles form a triangle if each angle is positive and the angles 
some to 180 degrees. Here we have a right angle triangle and we signify the right angle which is 90 degrees as thus making a little square. Now if we follow the corner of the right angle directly across this side of the triangle has a special name and it's called the hypotenuse and when we're considering an angle within the right angle triangle say we're considering this angle which is theta the side of the triangle next to the angle is called the adjacent so this is next to the so this is next to the angle it's the adjacent and then when we're considering directly across from the angle in question the angle theta this is the opposite so this is the side opposite the angle this is the side of the triangle adjacent to the angle we use the Pythagoras theorem to find the length of a side given any of the other two sides now the Pythagoras theorem we use a right angle triangle so note that this has to be a right angle and then we labeled the shorter sides A and B and the hypotenuse is labeled C so the th the theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared now note that these are the a and b are the shorter sides and c is the hypotenuse so we can write this as a squared plus b squared is the hypotenuse squared. In words, the two shorter sides squared add to the longest side squared so if you want to remember it in words the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides equal the longest side squared. Now let's use the Pythagoras theorem. So if we have a right angle triangle, we can use the Pythagoras theorem. Here we have a 3 cm length. Here we have the four a 4 cm length. So we have a squared, which is 3 squared, plus b squared, which is 4 squared. And this would equal our hypotenuse squared, which is c squared. So this would be 9 plus 16 is equal to c squared. So our c squared is 25. And our hypotenuse, which would be c, is 5 centimeters. 
In this question we're asked to find the length x. First of all, to apply Pythagoras theorem, we have to check that it's a right angle triangle, and it is. So we're going to use this theorem which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse. So the shorter sides, a squared and b squared, is 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to x squared. And from this we see that x squared is equal to the square root of 100 and x equals 10. In this question, again, to apply Pythagoras theorem, check it's a right angle. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So our shorter side is x, we want to know that. So that's x squared plus our b is uh, the other shorter side which is 24, 24 squared and our c is the hypotenuse which is 26 squared. So our x squared plus 5, 7, 6 is equal to 6, 7, 6. So x squared is 6, 7, 6 minus 5, 7, 6. x equals square root of 100. So therefore x is 10 units. Special triangles yield exact numbers when dealing with trigonometric functions. So if we have a triangle which is 30, 60, 90 degrees, so this would be our 90. This is our 30 on the top, and this would be our 60 degrees. Then if we have a length of 1 and a length of 2, then this would be square root of 3. If we translate this to a generic version of x, if this, again, for right angle triangle, with angles 30, 60, and 90. If we have this side as x, this would be 2x, and this would be the square root of 3x. Similarly, for a 45, 90 45 triangle if we have this as x then this would also be x because this length has to equal that length for these two angles to be 45 this would be the right angle then in that case, 45, 45, 90, this length is x, this length is x, and the hypotenuse will be the square root of 2x. Also when we're talking about Pythagoras, certain numbers, when we apply the Pythagoras theorem, gives us a set of positive integers. 
and these pos positive integers fit the rule. So these are called triples and an example of this is 3, 4, 5. So these would be the lengths of the sides of the triangle and the triangle has to be a right angle triangle. Again we have a triple 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, 8, 15, 17 and we can go on and continue making more triples. Also multiples of these would also give us triples. When we're talking about right angled triangles and we want to find the length of a side or an angle, certain trigonometric ratios exist which we can use to find the length or an angle of a right angle triangle. And these you've probably come across as so ka and toa. So when we're talking about our triangle, which it has to be a right angle triangle, and the angle here in question theta, this is O, which is the opposite, this is A, which is the adjacent, and this is H, which is the hypotenuse. Then sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse so that's the trigonometric ratio cos theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse and tangent theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So when we're labeling the sides, remember that we label with reference to the angle theta. So adjacent, directly across the opposite and the longer side, the hypotenuse. Sometimes, just as a trick, we can be given an isosceles triangle and if we draw a vertical line from the vertex we can make this into two right angle triangles and then we can apply our Pythagoras or our sine cosine trigonometric ratios Sometimes we have to use inverse functions to find the actual angle. So this is used to calculate the internal angle of a right angle triangle. So if we have theta, or we want to find theta, this would be the inverse sine of the opposite over the hypotenuse 
and in this case theta would be the inverse cosine of, of adjacent over hypotenuse inverse sine of inverse cosine of adjacent over hypotenuse and in the third case for tangent theta to find theta we'd have the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent when can we use trigonometric ratios so first of all we have to make sure that it's a right angle triangle and then label the sides so if we're looking at this angle theta in relation to that this is the opposite this is the hypotenuse and this is the adjacent side of the right angle triangle the easiest way to calculate or work out which trigonometric ratio to use is to have a formula triangle so the, the for SOCATOA there are three formula triangles so the first one for sine would be sine theta opposite over hypotenuse cosine theta adjacent over hypotenuse and for tangent we have tangent theta opposite over adjacent now to use these formula triangles we cover with our finger the length or the angle that we need to find and then we apply the rule of the formula triangle so in this case if we want to find in the right angle triangle sine theta we'd cover with our finger that and sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse in this case if we wanted to find hypotenuse we'd cover the h and h is would be and the hypotenuse the length of the hypotenuse would be adjacent over cosine theta now the other point that we need to mention is when to apply the sine cosine or trigonometric ratios for tangent for this we have to find out which two things in the trigonometric ratios we're given and then apply that rule so if, for example if we're given the opposite and the hypotenuse we apply so if we're given the adjacent and the hypotenuse we apply ka and then if we're given the opposite and the adjacent we apply toa so let's have a quick example so in this triangle so this angle here is 35 degrees this is 15 meters and this is X the length we need to find so which of these trigonometric ratios would we apply so first of all let's label this side the adjacent this is the opposite and this is our angle things so the two things we're given are the angle and the opposite and we want to find the hypotenuse so we cover 
the hypotenuse with our finger and in the formula triangle H equals opposite over the sine theta. So in this case x which is h is 15 divided by sine of 35 and this is 26.2 meters. What if in the exam, in the question, we're asked to find the lengths or angles of a non-right angle triangle? Well, then we have to use the sine and the cosine rule. And we label the triangle. So this would be angle A, this would be angle B, and this would be angle C. Directly across the side is C, little c, and directly across from B this would be B, and similarly across from A will be side A. Now the sine rule is the simplest of the two rules and it says A over sine A equals B over sine B which equals little c over sine c. Two rules or two cases where we apply the sine rule. So the first case is where we're given, or if we're given, two angles plus any side. And number two, if we're given two sides, so we're given the lengths of two sides and a non-enclosed angle. So those are the two cases, so those would be the two cases where we apply the sine rule. Now the cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Now the A is here and the A is also on this side. Another way of writing this or a second way of writing this is cos A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared divided by 2bc. Similarly to the sine rule, the cosine rule is applied in two cases. So the first case is if you're given two sides and an enclosed angle.
and the second case is where you're given all three sides. And no angle. Here we are going to have a look at using the sign rule. So we're given a triangle labelled A, angle A, side A, angle B, side B, and angle C, side little c. And we're told that the angle A is 40 degrees, and angle B is 80 degrees, and we're also told the length of B is 15 centimeters, and we're told to find C, little c, here. So that's the length. So using our rules, we realize this is two angles and a side. So that's what we're given. And using the rules, when we're given two angles and any side, we use the sine rule. So the part of the sine rule that we're going to use is B over sine B equals C, little c over sine of C. Now in order to find our angle C we use the fact that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So 180 minus 40 minus 80. So that gives us angle C. So angle C is 60 degrees. Now we can use our sine rule. So 15 divided by sine 80 equals little c over sine 60 degrees and this gives us little c equals 15 divided by sine 80 degrees multiplied by sine 60 degrees and the answer is when we work it out on our calculator 13.2 centimeters to one significant figure. Before going on to use an example involving the cosine rule let's just go over the cosine rule. So the familiar one that we're used to is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a. Now rearranging we get b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cos b. Notice that there's an a here and cos a, b here and cos b. So similarly we have little c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab and then cos c. So those are the three formulas that we can use. Alternatively when we rearrange those we have 
cos A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared divided by 2BC cos B equals A squared plus C squared minus B squared divided by 2AC and then finally cos C by rearranging the top formula we get A squared plus B squared minus C squared divided by 2AB and these are all the cosine rule let's just go through an example of using the cosine rule so we're given angle A is 60 degrees we're given B is 8 centimeters and we're given C is 5 centimeters so in this case we're given two sides and an enclosed angle and we want to find A so given an enclosed angle between two sides that we're given we use the cosine rule and we use, so the cosine rule says a squared which is what we want to find equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a so this becomes a squared B is 8 centimeters, so that's 8 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 multiplied by 8 multiplied by 5 multiplied by cos of 60 degrees. So A squared equals 49. A equals square root of 49 which is 7 centimeters in this video on triangles we're going to go over the area of a triangle so we know the area of a square or a rectangle is the base multiplied by the height so the area of a triangle is half of that so that's area equals a half base times the height now when we're given a non right angle triangle as in this one which is triangle a b c we do not know this vertical height that's the height we need to use to work out the area of a triangle so the vertical height h we can work out using our trig ratios remember so ka toa so using that h is a sine theta where theta is this angle here remember we label this little a this little c and this little b as the length so h equals a sine theta and when we substitute this into the formula the area equals a half a B sine theta similarly if we want to find the area using different lengths and angles 
If we label this angle alpha and this as angle beta, the area is a half BC sine of alpha and also a half CA sine beta. But mostly we'll use this top formula 